welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. We bring you the right information to empower you, the SME entrepreneur. Tonight, we're bringing you a special exclusive conversation on a report that has been released by Smira on the business prospects for small businesses. Now, 65% of poll bankers believe that business prospects and sentiment for small businesses will improve in the first quarter of FY20. I had the chance to sit down exclusively with Sankar Chakrabarti, the CEO of Smira Accutay Group, to understand his outlook and view as far as funding and lending for small businesses is concerned, the impact that the upcoming elections is going to have on business sentiment for small businesses as well as the digital push the small businesses are seeing. Take a listen. Sankar, thanks for uh, joining us here in studio today talking about a one-of-its-kind survey to, uh, which uh, looks at the mood really, which looks at lending to small businesses and which really talks about where small businesses are in India right now. So it's really exciting. Uh, as a show that's talking to SMEs and MSMEs to be talking to you today, I want to kick this off by talking about your survey, the banker's perspective on MSMEs, Jan to March 2019, essentially Q4 of FY 2019. Uh, why did you feel the need to do the survey? All the stakeholders of the economy, whether it is government, whether it is the lenders, uh, the VCs, uh, and even buyers, large buyers. They want to understand what is happening with the SMA segment. It's a very important segment. They generate a lot of employment. Mm -hmm. They uh, contribute a lot to the GDP growth. And they also contribute largely to the uh, exports. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, health of this segment, understanding the health of this segment is very important for all the stakeholders. Uh, given the nature, unorganized nature of this segment, data availability is poor. Sure. And uh, v the segment is very large. and they're spread all across the country, not just uh, four or five or 10 cities. Mm. This makes it very challenging to understand what is going on, see the trends and stuff like that. Uh, we tried to change that scenario by starting a sentiment survey of SMEs in 2016 in collaboration with CAFRAL. That was the first such uh, sentiment survey uh, that was conducted. Mm. But after conducting it for a couple of times, we realized that the segment is so large that 500 or 1,000 or even 10,000 sample does not make any sense to understand what is happening to this vast sector which uh, where you know some 50 languages are spoken, uh, which are based in 50 different locations and so on and so forth. So there had, had to be a better way of understanding what is going on. Sure. So at that time when we got this realization, we started looking towards the bankers. Okay. Bankers interact with SMEs more than anybody else. Every SME has to visit their lenders. Sure. Uh, whether they get the loan or not get, it will be very unlikely that a SME has not tried to get a loan from a bank and in the process has not spoken to a banker. Sure. So a banker knows what is actually going on, what are the challenges. Mm. Uh, so we decided to conduct this survey. We are not calling it sentiment survey because sentiment is an overused word. Sure. It's a very simple survey trying to bring out what is likely to happen in the next few quarters and how bankers are seeing it. Sure. Presenting it in a very simple format, no complex uh, you know, uh, uh, graphs or charts. Mm. Uh, they are really not necessary because people, bankers are really giving you the the, 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 how they are seeing it already. So, okay. so this is a very simple report, easy to understand, but loaded with extremely valuable data. Fantastic. Let's then dive right in and talk about the key headline really of the survey. 65% yes. of all the bankers that you've surveyed believe that uh, uh, the, the outlook really uh, or the prospects for MSMEs in Q1 of FY20 will improve. Yes. Why do they feel that? Uh, See, there are a lot of factors uh, uh, which has come in between. Mm. There are significant uh, interventions that was made by the that has been made by the government. Sure. Um, we have seen PCA banks coming out of the uh, PCA framework, mm. and they have started lending. Uh, bankers are clearly seeing that uh, they are, they are having uh, more footfall in their branches. Sure. SME applications are coming. Mm. After a long time, this is probably, this has started happening and it's a positive sign for the sure. segment. Uh, 
also there is uh, uh, this awareness amongst uh, everybody that SME segment is a good segment to lend to. Okay. You know, if you look at our uh, NPS uh, in the large corporate segment, infra sector and uh, other such places, there is uh, power sector for example, the opportunities are fewer, mm -hmm. whereas SME is where everybody is um, uh, everybody is trying to focus on because there the opportunity really lies. If you look at all the fintech companies, you will, if you look at NBFCs, they have all made SMEs their priority. Okay, uh, so we, as we're talking about Q1, uh, would it be fair to sort of expand that and look at the whole of FY20 and say that perhaps we can see better sentiment across the board for small businesses? Absolutely. So this is not just an outlook on Q1. Sure. This trend we expect is going to continue. Mm -hmm. Uh, through the through the current year. Okay, uh, let's break this up and talk about the different zones of India and really break it up into the four zones. And you have data that's looking specifically at you know each of the four zones. Uh, do you want to run us through that? Yeah. So uh, bankers in north and east are very optimistic. Okay. Uh, they have clearly shared their optimism. Uh, as far as the observations of the past mm -hmm. uh, in terms of footfall. Western zone bankers and Eastern zone bankers have reported uh, improvement in footfalls. Mm -hmm. uh, and by footfalls, you mean the applications, the sure. the applicants coming to the bank sure. uh, branches, visiting mm -hmm. them, asking for loan or inquiring about a loan. Mm -hmm. We are uh, uh, southern zone, uh, though uh, by nature maybe the, uh, they have been a little conservative in reporting optimism. Mm -hmm. But what is very important uh, here is that. Uh, clearly, southern region SMEs are least likely to borrow from informal lenders. Okay, why is that? Uh, if you see south, uh, there are a lot of mid-tier banks who actually cannot lend to very large companies because their book is smaller sure, sure. and therefore they look at the SMEs. So s SMEs in south mm -hmm. actually have a recourse to go to say a Catholic Syrian bank mm -hmm. or Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank and st uh, South Indian Bank and mm -hmm. Uh, Karur Vaisa Bank and so on and so forth. So this actually is helping the southern economy mm -hmm. because of the presence of so many mid-tier banks who are willing to look at and are forced to look at SMEs as a segment. Okay, so then east, west and north perhaps are more likely to approach informal uh, sort of routes of uh, credit, if I can yes, call it that? Yes, because okay. if the demand is increasing there, sure. which is clearly, mm -hmm. if formal credit does not keep up the pace with this demand, mm -hmm. informal credit will naturally fill that gap. Sure. So uh, the message to the uh, bankers in these regions mm -hmm. is that, that they have to strategize and they have to tap this opportunity. Okay. Uh, you were talking about you know how sentiment is expected to increase. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, of course, is the political environment right now, right. which is uh, expected to impact everything that is happening. Let's break it up into two or three things. First is, I want to talk about the ease of business that has definitely been increasing. Right. Uh, do you see that having uh, much of an impact really in access to credit for businesses? Ease of doing business is not a very short term phenomenon. Sure. Uh, I cannot question uh, international multilateral agencies when they very strongly support uh, the fact that India's ease of doing business has significantly improved. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I, uh, it's a, it's a matter of great pride for us mm -hmm. that this much of progress has happened. Yeah. But it is not something that gives you instant gratification. Sure. The results are not going to be seen in one month or two months. Sure. These are long-term things. It will take five years to understand where it impacted, and mm -hmm. the process should continue. The, you know, it's not like we'll in one day will be as uh, it will be as easy to do business as it is in U.S. Sure. or Germany. Okay. Uh, so it's a very, uh, uh, very, very uh, positive thing overall, and it is a long-term thing. So it cannot be measured in short term. Okay. What do the bankers feel about the elections and the impact that's having on lending and the sentiment of lending to small businesses? Right. You uh, you asked me the previous question yeah. was about uh, political uncertainty. Yeah. You know, I I feel that uh, for SMEs this is not at all a threat. Okay. Because across the spectrum of all political parties. Mm -hmm. SMEs remain a very, very big constituent sure. of uh, of them. You know, they have to if they have to come to power through a democratic process, they cannot uh, treat, uh, they cannot keep SMEs out of their uh, purview. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, probably the large rural market and large 
uh, agricultural sector comes first, mm -hmm. but definitely SMEs come next. Okay. So uh, political environment is something that I will not see having much of an impact. Political environment can have impact on large sectors, company, uh, government's uh, policies on land acquisition and uh, 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 power sector mm -hmm. and so and so forth may impact very large companies. Mm -hmm. But for SMEs, uh, what is very important is that uh, uh, they get funding. They can get, they should get enough funding to cater to the order that they would have received. The timely payment from large corporates, uh, these things uh, will have positive impact on them. And then, then I'm sure that bo any government who comes sure. will be working on them. There are certain factors which adversely impacts SMEs, which is beyond the purview beyond anybody's control, like exchange rate and oil prices. Sure. There is only very limited control on them. They also impact the uh, SMEs. Sure. But we are expecting that the, uh, you know, the, in the coming year, exchange rate and oil both will be less uh, of a worry. Mm -hmm. uh, at least we can all hope for that. I'm going to slip into a very short break on that note, but much more on the other side. Just stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and we're continuing to bring you the highlights of an exclusive survey on bankers' perspective for small businesses that's been released by the Smira Accutay Group. I want to also talk about the regulatory framework in the country uh, yeah. and the impact really for small businesses. We were talking about ease of business. The other thing I want to talk about is demonetization and GST. And that's definitely leveled the playing field for small businesses, right? Well, uh, uh, G GST implementation was of was a first of its kind mm -hmm. uh, in the country. And we'll, uh, we all know that this uh, implementation process due to the softwares and due to certain fine tuning of the tax structures mm -hmm. Uh, initially had certain uh, issues that have been sorted out and I think uh, you know now now uh, GST is not something that I'm hearing uh, is a issue or a problem from these uh, uh, SMEs sure. so when I meet SMEs I don't I, we don't discuss GSTs uh, GST being an issue uh, anymore I think they have accepted and adopted it mm -hmm. uh, demonetization is a very interesting thing and I will not uh, get into the debate of sure. whether it was good or whether it was successful or not but we actually conducted a survey uh, immediately after uh, demonetization was announced mm -hmm. to see you know as part of our normal process of seeing how people are seeing how it will impact them sure. okay. what is very interesting is that all the people who responded to the survey, it was a dipstick, a dipstick survey, it was not a very detailed exercise of calling 500,000 customers and checking them. It was a very dip, dipstick survey. But what is what came out very clearly is that the SMEs accepted that uh, cash economy is not going to work anymore. Sure. You know, so so we, we, we saw that they shared that there will be some hardship uh, but they also shared that they support that initiative. Mm. So this is very interesting. Yes, uh, it had some short-term impact uh, on the on the processes. Maybe some of it was unforeseeable, but but I think we are past uh, both the events. Sure. And they will have long-term positive impact on the economy. Okay. Uh, while we're talking of uh, you know the role of bankers when it comes to lending to small businesses, I want to talk about the role of the government as well because. Uh, the government perhaps has the largest lending role when it comes to small businesses, right. SMEs and MSMEs. But without going to the specifics of different schemes, which we're all aware of, I want to talk about the information about these schemes, and that seems to be lacking. Yeah. What perhaps is the view of the bankers on that? Uh, if one, uh, if there are two concerns which uh, have come out uh, from these, uh, uh, from the uh, survey, uh, one is very clearly that only one third of the constituents sure. are fully aware about all the schemes sure. that are meant to benefit the SMEs. Sure. So very clearly, uh, the the uh, 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 central government organizations, their officials, 
the bankers and even people like us who work for the SMEs have to do much more to uh, take the benefit of these schemes to the beneficiaries. If the beneficiaries don't know that a scheme exists and they don't know how to avail of those benefits, how will those schemes benefit them? So this has clearly come out that uh, one third of the constituents are aware, the remaining needs to be made aware. Sure. Uh, which brings me to my next question, and that's really the role of technology and digital. Perhaps, uh, n you know, never before the kind of innovation that we're seeing happening in the fintech space, perhaps spurred by demonetization, but the right. fact is that the kind of innovation we're seeing now has never happened before. Uh, bankers positive about this? Hopeful that more will be done? Uh, f fintech is a very, very uh, positive um, development uh, for this segment. Yeah. Uh, lending to SMEs is a very expensive process, especially so in India because people speak different languages and they are spread all across the country, which is uh, physical distance makes it more difficult to reach to them. Mm. Acquiring a borrower uh, is a very expensive process. Reviewing them periodically and analyzing them for credit risk are also very expensive process. Sure. This is where the traditional methods of banking will only be able to cater to mm a limited segment of these sure. uh, people. Uh, why? Because formal lending or bank lending mm. depends on ba bank's uh, ba balance sheet, sure. uh, audited balance sheet, which a large number of SMEs would not be having for natural reasons. Second thing that they depend on is prior history of banking, whether he has been repaying loan on time or not, which is available from credit bureau. A large part of these uh, SMEs are borrowing from uh, friends and relatives and informal sources. They will not have this history, sure. which we call a new to credit segment. Sure. Uh, now, if you have to lend to them, you have to develop new methods. Sure. New methods of reaching out to them, acquiring them, sure. new method of appraising them and looking at them. Sure. This is where fintech will come in, uh, come and play a very important role. Okay. And this is what we are seeing in all the developed countries. Okay. Even smaller African countries, there are fintechs who are taking credit to the places where it has never reached earlier. Mm. However, mm. one thing we have to be very, very cautious, whether it is the fintech itself, whether it is the investors of the fintech or it is the banks. Uh, while we are talking about building new credit risk analytics mm. uh, to be able to lend on the basis of uh, parameters other than uh, uh, balance sheet and bank statement, it is very important that we also keep it in mind that modern tools and techniques like AI and machine learning can also pick up social biases okay. uh, and can become very opaque. So analytical purity or and a purity of data crunching mm. and social justice, both these has to be balanced when you are developing these new methods. Sure. You don't want your credit risk uh, model to say that, okay, I will not lend to a woman entrepreneur or I'll not lend to a certain uh, backward segment of the country okay. because they are less likely to repay their loan because they are naturally getting discriminated against. Okay. Uh, therefore, the models has to be transparent, it has to balance social justice, and at the same time, it has to do a good job of analyzing credit. Okay. This is where I think we will play a role in advising and helping out uh, the banks in developing new tools and methods to assess credit of SMEs. Sure. Uh, in fact, uh, speaking of informal and formal credit, uh, you have specific data that shows just the cost of accessing that informal credit and how much more expensive it's going to be? Uh, at the bare minimum, informal credit is 100 to 200 basis points more than formal credit. Sure. And don't forget that much of this comes from actually families mm -hmm. and friends, which is relatively cheaper. It, mm -hmm. You know, that, that shows that it is only 100 to 200 basis point from the survey. Sure. This is what the bankers are saying. Sure. Our assessment is that this may be a little understated because of the fact that uh, you know though banks are not bank funding is not accessible to many of them, they have their friends and relatives to source uh, funding from. But if you look at a large section of it, which in our estimate will be nothing less than 20 trillion rupees of borrowing, which happens from informal segment, the the uh, additional cost will be higher than 200 basis points. Okay. 
Uh, let's then wind down this interview. Uh, while you did say that this is not a sentiment survey, yeah. my question to you, Shankar, what is really the sentiment for twenty for FY20 going? FY20 in? is going to be good for this segment. Okay. Uh, force less foreseeable unforeseeable events take over. Mm -hmm. Uh, which could be uh, a global uh, meltdown, which could be uh, oil prices, which could be exchange rates, which we are not foreseeing at this point of time. Sure. Apart from that, we see a positive uh, 2020 uh, for SMS. Okay. Great talking to you here on the show, Shankar. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Thanks. That's our show tonight. If you have any feedback for us, do let us know. Leaders of Tomorrow Times Group.com is our email ID. Also, do let us know on Twitter what you think about this interview, any questions you may have. LOT underscore ET now, Sunanda underscore J on Twitter. Leaders of Tomorrow and ET now on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.